Mukunama Tumbo, uh, you are going to be one of the top candidates to the uh, ele presidential elections next December 23rd in the supposed to be Democratic Republic of Congo, which has been uh, managed by a tyrant whose name is Joseph Kabila for 17 years. What is your view today about the Democratic Republic of Congo? Christian, I'm optimistic because I believe in Africa and I believe most of them in DRC. DRC is a big country. We have all the potential in terms of human resources. We have the natural resources. So I'm, I'm really optimistic. I think, of course, Kabila has done what he should be, uh, should be doing. Today, we have to think about the future without him. He has done 17 years and uh, tomorrow is ours. So now we are planning on tomorrow with all we have, like resources, in human resources and natural resources. So you just wrote a book uh, entitled Republic, Democratic Republic of Congo, a possible regional integration. What do you wish that the reader uh, get out from it? You know, it's just a base, it's a, it's a book that is a base of my manifesto because I want to show where we came from with my, car my career as a woman. It was not very easy and I'm showing in the book where I, I came from, what I've done and to, to see the, the place of DRC in the region, what we can give to our neighbors and what we can get from them. So it's a book that is like a, a base of my manifesto that it has to be uh, to be done very soon. Republic Democratic of Congo offers a real contrast. You have on the one hand one of the poorest country in the world, where people have really trouble in having a, a acceptable life, a level of living. And at the same time, your underground is one of the richest of the world. How do you expect yourself, if you become president of this country, to get it out of this poorness? It, it needs diplomacy. You need, we need to see in which way all uh, the investors, how all our partners, they can find their way into DRC, a win-win situation with the local population. I know it's a long road, but we have to start, to start one day. And then this election, that the coming election will give a start, you know, a beginning to a new world for the business partner, the partners of DRC, and for the local people as well. I think it's a start, you know, in all the ways, on all the way we can see, you know, DRC has a chance to develop because we have gone through all the bad, you know, side of life, war, women being raped, you know, all, all we have been uh, going through, it's just to prepare us to be better, you know, for the future. In a country, as I said, which has been run by a real tyrant, Joseph Kabila, how do you expect to have really proper democratic elections, free elections? Uh, don't you fear there will be political frauds or whatever? We don't have to fear anything because no way out without the elections. So we, we are not discuss, discussing about election or not. We are discussing in which way to secure the election process. That's why the civil society has to play a very big role. And our partners, you know, we have uh, MONUSCO, we have uh, EU, and all the partners, if they can assist us to, to have the real elections, but maybe Kabila as well, if at least he can think that he can and uh, give us a certain legacy. So I think it's a matter of a dynamic. DRC people and outside, we need those elections. What can we say about the new mineral code? Yeah. The, the new mineral code, of course, it's not, it's not very flexible for uh, investors, but it is something, if it's well managed, that can assist DRC to develop. Of course, at maybe 90%, but uh, it, um, it, the, the, we must have a talk with our partners to see in which way we can assist them in their way of doing business with DRC and the way they can assist us to develop. We need infrastructures, we need to build, you know, roads, we need to build school from the activities. At least Congolese people, they will know that they are living in a very rich country. My last two questions will take us to Middle East. Uh, first question, what would be your positions towards Israel? How would you, what kind of relationship, if you become president, will you have? with the state of Israel? Israel has the know-how. We have the natural resources. Where do you want ourselves to go? Because it's a young country, it has gone through you know, challenges, so we need 
another country that can understand us better to accompany us in terms of service, new technology. So Israel is very interesting, even for the agriculture. So we are, we are looking for Israel to assist us in a which way that, that our economy can be stable with the know-how. And what about the neighbors, the most important neighbors, Saudi Arabia, the old monarchies? Yeah. What kind of relationship could you have with them? You know, they've, they've, they've given us a very good example, you know, trying to have, you know, transition from the oil sector to tourism. What we are, we are not able for now to do, because we are relying only at 100%, again, maybe 90%, but uh, 90 or 100% on the mining sector. So we need to arrive at a position whereby we can now have a transition from the mining sector to agriculture and tourism. That's what um, I want to do in my manifesto, so that we can have more and more uh, investors in other sectors than you know, what is primary for DRC, the mining sector.